Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to do with the data source.error message. And this is probably a message that you would frequently see if you are sharing files. Uh, you're, you're kind of a intermediate Power Query users and you're, and you're sharing files amongst peers. So let's see what that looks like. Say we're in a situation where we have Carrie and Ian, and they're both working on the same project. Now, Carrie puts together a budget set, and it's going to be the source for the analysis they're going to be working on. It's a large file, so instead of sending this file back and forth, each would have the same local copy. So when Carrie sends it to Ian, he puts it onto his own documents folder. And now she uses a new file to do her analysis on her local budget file. She sends that to Ian so they can collaborate on the analysis. And when he opens up the Power Query to refresh the query, he gets this data source error. Now, Ian decides that in the Power Query steps, he's going to put the file under a different path in the source step. And he does analysis. He sends it back to Kerry, uh, changes the source in the Power Query, sends it back to Kerry, and she opens it. And guess what happens when she refreshes the file? Well, she's going to get the same data source error. So let's see how we can rectify this. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. This is just one of the ways and it's going to be using the parameter feature in Power Query. Here let's simulate it in how Query would do it initially. So the data file is already in Query's local path and I've opened up this analysis file. So we're just going to pull it in from Power Query with Power Query. So we're going to get data from file and I'll just go browse for that file. So here I've browsed for the file. You see it's under users, carry documents, data. Open that up and it's going to open up in the Power Query Navigator. Is a table in that file? I'll click on the table, click transform data, and I'll show you where it looks up in the source code when the source step for that file. So if we look at the source here, you can see that it's looking in that directory path, right? I'll just do some brief steps, maybe just do a filter just to see that it's doing something or just show that it's doing something. We'll just filter for engineering, click close and load. It's going to pull up that file now. So here it is. This is Carrie with the perspective that she's working on her, on her own PC and she's got the analysis file and it's all local and it's looking at her my document, her documents folder on that path. Now she sends this file over to Ian. Of course, Ian has that budget file in his own directory path. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to simulate being on Ian's desktop. Of course, I, I, don't, I can't do two people, but so let's say that that data file is in Ian's uh, path now. So we'll just move it over there. So now we have the data file in Ian's path, right? So if we go back to the analysis file, and that's the one that Carrie sent over to Ian, it should not work because it's trying to find it in this directory path. So here I'm in the analysis file. I just pretend that we sent it over to Ian, and he decides to refresh it. And he's going to get this error. And it's trying to look for it under the carry folder, but it's not there. So how do we do with that to make sure that they each get their own path to find that file? We just create a parameter and they can just change that parameter each time they get the file. We'll go back into the table query, double click that. And all we need to do is just create a parameter and then change the source where it's looking for it. So what we can do here is create a new parameter. And there's many ways we can do this. We can put, have it where the parameter is a very common file path that is common amongst Carrie and, and Ian, or we can just make it where it's their specific file path. And all they need to do is just change this parameter each time they get the file. Now we go to new parameter and we'll just call this uh, file path or just make it short, just call it path. And for the current value, it's going to be the path of that user's directory, right? Users and then We'll say for him, it'll be Ian, and then it'll be documents. So it was users, Ian, documents, right? Users, Ian, documents. So now we've created a name for that path, the parameter name. Click OK, and that's fine. 
Now we'll take that path name and use it as a source for our query that's called table one. Double click that query, go into the source, and we're gonna put that path name there, path, and then ampersand, space ampersand, and delete. Go ahead and delete everything until we get to the file name. Because that's where it resides, in that particular user in documents folder path. Press enter, and now we should see that it works, right? So you can see that. So if I decide to work, if I'm Ian, and then I decide, oh, I don't want engineering, I want to do accounting, I click OK, it works, click close and load, and I send this back to Carrie, and let's simulate Carrie's perspective, back, back to Carrie's perspective. So with Carrie's perspective, she doesn't have this Ian document path. Let's get rid of that, put the file, the data, data file back into Carrie's folder here. Now from Carrie's perspective, she has a data file in her photo path. Of course, she doesn't have this particular photo path, doesn't have an Ian photo path. And let's go back and pretend that now she's got that analysis file back and she refreshes it. So Carrie sees this file, you know that it's from Ian because he still has that photo path there. But when she goes to refresh that table, she's gonna get that error. But all she needs to do is go under this path here and just change that to Carrie. Click close and load. Now we just need to refresh this and she's gonna get the table. So there's no errors there. And now they can do this back and forth with this particular file. Now doing it one file may not be a big deal, but if we had several files, several data files, data file one, data file two, data file three, and they all had their own transformations and they're all equally as large. Uh, all you needed to do then is just create one parameter and have the source of each one of those look for that, that directory path. And this makes it a little bit easier to share files when your source is really large and you are collaborating with other Power Query users. So this is the way that we can get around that data source, that error message when we're sharing Power Query files. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.